We had graduated in 2001. So it's a long back story, right? And you know, my hair is also almost gone. So, uh, and you are fresh uh, blood and fresh brain. So you can think more uh, profoundly than us, right? Than me. So, uh, what I will do is like, uh, in this session, I'll not teach you anything. I'll just give you one problem. I'll first describe that what the problem is. So you guys try to figure out what can be the solutions. You don't have to code maybe right now, but yeah. So you are you are the solution architect, you are the developer, you have to tell me how it can be solved. Or uh, maybe right not right now, maybe later on we can work together because yeah, this is my one of my friend and colleague. Uh, So, uh, the thing is, uh, what I'm telling them, we will give you the problem, so you try to find a solution for it. Is it okay? And you have to speak up, right? We are, um, at least we are not your stars, so you don't have to call on our stars. We are your brother, you can say, hi, or the international student, I don't know what you would say, but anything is okay for me. So please uh, speak up and try to help us here. Okay? So, how many of you heard the name MQTT? Anybody? One at least? Or is it half? Okay, full. He knows full. Okay. So, MQTT is a protocol. You know, there are a lot of protocols right, right uh, in this uh, domain, today, especially on the software and um, also uh, in the industry. A lot of terminology and it is very difficult to remember but good part is in Google's age everything is possible. You don't know maybe right now just Google it and you'll find it. So before going to the MQTT, let's discuss the IoT. Uh, as in the first session I have said that in Datasoft we are working with disruptive technologies especially in my uh, um, Department. We are working with data science, machine learning, AI, and also uh, IoT. So today, especially you are you know, uh, computer, they have to account, computer students, computer science students. But uh, we feel that in IoT space, though it is a hardware or at least electrical based equipment, you know IoT, Internet of Things, right? So these are equipment. These are uh, some sensors which are connected to the real world and it collects data. And after, I mean, what is, what data means? Data means nothing, right? If, if you have to prepare it, you have to, you have to uh, make sense out of it, right? Then it becomes usable. So these are called you know, actionable uh, data. So the sensors that are capturing the data is IoT. But most part uh, depends after that, okay? And there, definitely the computer science students, uh, you are the star there, and uh, that's why I bring this problem to you, okay? So, this is basically, uh, I mean, you heard the layer architecture? Because nowadays everything is, previously it was like, you know, it's a software problem, the software guys can do it, and there is a security guy who will understand the security part of it, but now, uh, nowadays, what happens? we try to find a architecture first of all. So what can be the standard architecture which is uh, scalable, which is uh, <coughs> error free and also uh, it is globally accepted, right? Standard <coughs> acceptation, acceptation should be there. So that's why it's a standard, we can say standard architecture. How it works is there is a device layer. The sensors, I'm talking about these sensors are all here. You can see there are a lot of uh, very easy sensors, the temperature, uh, the humidity, noise and everything. And on the top you can see industry, industrial sensors. And these sensors are, I'm sorry about the quality, it's like a old age TV. Sorry about that. I can fix it. Oh, by the way, uh, I don't, I mean, I didn't ask you the names because I cannot remember everybody's name, but uh, if you have any question, just raise your hand, okay? 
So these sensors are remote sensors. They have to send the data. And which, again, which is the protocol? Because if you build a, a sensor with your own protocol or with your own sense, then nobody can interface with it, right? So there are standard protocol stack, like Zigbee, uh, LoRa, Bluetooth. I think Bluetooth is already very hard. Okay. Uh, uh, Ethernet, you know, on everybody's own. Uh, Wi-Fi, all known. But you, did you heard of the LoRa technology? LoRa? No? LoRa is there, stands for low range, uh, long range. Long range, how long? Bluetooth, usually 5 to 10 meters. And this LoRa, I can go up to uh, 10 to 25 kilometers. Kilometers, not meters. So it's a huge uh, range. And you'll be amazed if you see the sensor. LoRa sensor are very small, tiny piece of hardware, and it can go up to 10 to uh, 15 kilometers in an open field. So these are the te uh, technologies uh, that the sensors uh, sense the data and uh, import the data. Now there is a communication layer, and again it goes to the IP. I mean, whatever the sensor sends here, it sends the information through this, uh, this communication uh, layer channel, and then they are called IoT gateway. Just like the Wi-Fi gateway, it's like IoT gateway. And then it transfers to IP. They are all IP. No, this technology exists only IP. And here comes the MQTT. So MQTT is basically a TCP IP uh, layer of technology where it works on IP. Uh, it can be plain text or SSL, secure layer. So this is basically a broker. I'll come to uh, the next, uh, next slide. So this, what it does, let's say hundreds of thousands of uh, device or uh, sensors are here. So they send all kinds of information to the broker, and broker knows in which uh, uh, sensor needs to uh, which app. So it is app specific routing is there. You know the routing kind of stuff, right? Uh, in a simple sense, let's say I send you a message. It cannot be go to the other person, mm -hmm. right? It should be go to you. Because it's maybe it's your phone number, maybe it's your unique ID kind of thing. So that has to be there. So that is routing is very important. So the MQTT broker, what it does, it uh, transmits the data, transmits the information to the specific uh, app or application layer. So this is the application layer. So all these terms are all technical. And then the business <coughs> If I, you know, if I uh, give this uh, lecture on a DBA class, nobody will understand nothing, right? But from this to this, you understand it. Almost. But after that, the business is right. Business is important because whatever software you are producing, whatever work you are doing, the business has to make sense of it, right? How Facebook works. I mean, uh, it's not. It's not running on your uh, tweet, on your like, or on your post. Facebook is Facebook and Google. They make money on advertisement. That means the business, right? And they give you the service fee, just like YouTube. I heard YouTube is last year a billion, eight point eight billion dollar. Uh, they just earned in ads on YouTube. So and we are uh, watching YouTube free, right? It's, we are thinking that. Is free for everybody, but not like that. So, so the but business is very important. So, what we have to do is like today we'll try to find out a MQTT broker how to make it. That's a problem we have to find. So, I don't have any solution. We have to make it, and then the dashboard. Dashboard is important because in a business uh, they don't understand all this technical stuff. They don't need to. what they need. They need specific. Uh, items in numbers. They want to see how many machines are running, let's say, 50% uh, of time, how many are, you know, 90 over, over, I mean, over running. So this kind of information they want to see in a graphical form. Now, because uh, 
Previously, it was like an Excel, they just give them Excel sheet, they just print. But now they want graphical interface. They want graph to see the trend. So are you following? Or is the film flipping? Following. This side, this side is very white. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what is MPTT program? That I already said. Uh, there are two type of uh, broker. Uh, sorry, uh, one type of broker, and there are two type of client. You can say one client is just send a message with a particular, uh, you know, particular what is called topic. It's a very simple protocol. One which is let's say this is a send a publisher. They are saying it. This is the publisher client and this is the subscriber client. It's like, you know, you subscribe for this kind of uh, message, a particular topic, this client will subscribe to it and this publisher client, it will publish the information on that particular topic. Then only this routing happens. Okay, so let's, so let's see there are three clients which, I mean, each of the clients subscribe to a particular Topic, topic one, two, three. Now this client can send uh, three of the uh, subscriber at once. It's a like wildcard message, or it can send a message to a particular client. Let's say topic three. If it sends a message to particular I mean, topic three, this client three will receive the message. Okay. So. The feature why it has TCP IP based, as I already said, it is a port, I mean, this is standard port 1883 is the port number that it listens to and it also sends the message to that particular port. Plain text or secure, it can be. Uh, user pass authentication will be there. Let's say this message, I mean, uh, if, if this message, I mean, client uh, subscribe to a particular uh, topic, Nobody can send a message without that username and password. So that kind of authentication is there. And also, it supports uh, QS. So how many of you know QoS? You know? Quality of service. Yeah, it's a quality of service. Can I write here or? Quality of 
surveys. So now, now you understand what is the LPGD broker and what is the objective of this broker? So is it, uh, what do you think? Is it software related uh, thing or is the IoT? If you, no, if you forget about the past, I mean, previous uh, uh, slide, if I give you this kind of example, it's a broker and you have to make this broker and with the client. Because it's a communication, all of you, I think you know the messenger, right? It's a simple messenger kind of thing, right? Nothing else, you don't have to worry about what behind you. It's only a message router with particular features, right? So, uh, if I tell you that we have to uh, build this kind of broker, how you address it? How do you, how do you want to architecture it and code it? In which language you want to code it? Any idea? Hey, I mean you don't have uh, it's only only 3 30 a.m. Don't be sleepy. So what I do is like as you are not answering, so let's divide divide some of the students and try to form some groups. Okay? And you discuss internally and uh, come up with uh, solutions. Okay. So it's a question like how would I use the program? Uh, code and uh, you can say navigation. You don't have to code right now. Just with plain paper, plain paper, you just have to uh, write the uh, like let's say how you address the solution. Okay? That is the problem. So uh, who wants to volunteer me to, to uh, form the group? I will choose now if you don't stand up. Yeah, you will still stand up. Don't be worried, I'll just say that I will bring some groups. Okay. So, how we can do? We can like, uh, how many students we have here? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
what you have to do is like you don't have to quote the broker right now because we don't have the facility or time right now. What you have to do is you just give me a blueprint. Like let's say uh, a blueprint. You have to decide like uh, the architecture of the solution. It has to be scalable. I say scalable distributed redundant architecture. So the broker has to be that kind of scalable and the architecture should be there. Okay. So first thing is you have to give a architecture. Second, you have to give me the preferred language. Preferred language, okay? And do you know the data structure? I mean, have you heard, uh, have you read the data structure? Not yet? If you said no. Past any students. Thank you. 
let's say there should be an application layer, one should be a control layer, because you can say it's a control center. Because this MP2 broker, uh, it cannot be a black box, right? It will definitely take the inputs and transmit the information, but at the same time, it has to generate some uh, statistics, like how many uh, clients are connected, what are the messages they are sending, like let's say how many connected clients, right? How many messages per hour or per minute they are sending or transferring? This kind of information, statistics, it has to generate. So there should be a control kind of layer. So this layer, I mean layering of the diagram is called the architecture. Okay? So what I have to do is like uh, draw a piece of you know square kind of uh, graph where you will say at the bottom what it uh, at the bottom there are operating system and then there is a control uh, layer, there is an application layer, there is a presentation layer. So this kind of layering <coughs> is called architecture. So if you don't know what is architecture, you can say it's a very simple kind of simplistic architecture of the system. Okay? So you don't have to be I mean worried about the architecture and it has kind of, and it should not be the right one. You just propose and we will discuss uh, where the improvement can be done. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Please uh, carry on with work.
from Rupa and Rupa to Harikar who are coming? Then he will be successful logging. 
And if you want to create a new account, we just uh, check one or two things maybe. Uh, if both of the passwords are same, I mean, we will, we will tell him to retake the password if the passwords are same. Or we can use uh, a other solution that this password is weak or strong. Or you can use token. Yes, we can also use token. So that's it. The, suppose I think all of you are clear about the uh, registration model. So after the login is done, then we will redirect it to the dashboard. In the dashboard, you will see there are many, many apps according to the functionalities. I have given, I have given IoT software engineering, so maybe, maybe suppose uh, our teacher is using this, so he may be want to publish a notice about the next quiz, when will the next quiz will happen, or he may be given an announcement about that next class is cancelled, or he may publish the marks of the quiz, something like that. So he will uh, choose the tab according to his choice, and whenever he chooses a tab, he will redirect it to another page, which will be made by, of course, obviously using another class, and we we'll just simply push the message. So the message can be pushed to the server in many ways. It can be used using plain text, plain text or JSON or XML. So I think we will prefer JSON because JSON <coughs> is obviously better than plain text in extending data and uh, spreading data or being uh, cross platform. Uh, and it's better than XML because it's faster than XML. So we will use JSON and the message will be pushed and it will be maintained in dot in another separate table according to the message. If it is about class input, it will, be, it will have a separate class, a separate table, and if it is about quiz input, we have another table. So that's how our client form will function. Now let's talk about client 2. So client 2 will have uh, similar login registration platform, but you will have another extra option. You will have to mention his subscription type. So whenever he enters a subscription type, we will get the ID. Suppose subscription type 1 is with a student. Or he is uh, just a staff or a visiting lecturer, something like this. Suppose we give here one ID1 and two ID2. So whenever he presses experience, uh, we will get this ID and store that in the user uh, tables, his ID. We store, store it here. So after that, he logins and registers, he will similarly take it to his dashboard and he will try to see the messages. But the catch here is whenever he tries to click on a message, he won't be able to see all the messages because we will check whether his ID matches with that message. So for example, a staff shouldn't know about the quiz marks of the students. So if his ID is true, he won't see those messages. We will redirect the pages in such a way using market trading that he only sees the messages that are delivered to him. So we will check this and of course we will uh, use uh, uh, another button named change subscription type with of course pro proper authentication. Yeah. If he changes the uh, his subscription type, his ID will change. So I think that's how we function. And okay. I think we, we can So, uh, so when when it's association and we'll store that ID. So we will maintain a priority queue. We have used priority queue in SDL that uh, whenever uh, something is pushed into the priority queue, uh, every time the uh, it, it gets sorted. So whenever a premium user is requesting to see a page, he will obviously get uh, priority and he will see the page first. Yeah, thank you. So uh, in which uh, year? So I mean third year. Third year. So as time is very limited, so let's. I mean, wrap it up here, at least for this project, okay? So I think you should uh, understand and uh, try to learn how to, you know, think like a software engineer. Because you know, I mean, in the real world, nobody will tell you that you have to code this way. 
the field is open. You will give in a problem like this, or it's a very simple problem. There will be many much more complex project or problem to become. So you have to think like a software engineer. Nobody will tell you uh, that okay, you have to do it this way or that way. There is no right or wrong. All you have to do is make the software running properly. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Uh, before I come, should I break for the prayer or what? I think we close it down in 10, 10 minutes. Yes, okay. Yes. Any question or to this to your friend there? Do you find any problem? Though he missed uh, three points, let's say the, uh, the, the scalability of this circuit. You know, when you try to use a database, there comes the database maintenance and uh, how you manage and if there are uh, millions of messages per minute or per hour, then how you handle this. So that has to be thought of. Her. So I will give you one example. Basically, this is Eclipse. You know the Eclipse, I think you should know the Eclipse.org, right? So they basically published this, this uh, open source MQTT broker. So, I mean, uh, this broker has everything I have just told you. The source code is there and also there uh, how to run it and uh, how to uh, contribute to the community as well. So, it's not like that you just install it and it's all yours. It's not like that. It runs properly because we are running it as an open source uh, tool, but the problem of this solution is like why I bring this problem to you. It's like this solution doesn't have any GUI, it doesn't have any dashboard to see the statistics, all are hidden inside. So if I have to make a uh, professional grade software and use the broker, what I have to do? I have to download it or clone it and then I have to, you know, uh, see, the, see the architecture, how it has been done and try to hack in the system so that I can make it weak uh, or dashboard for us. So that's the uh, basic idea of this uh, session, okay? So in this way, basically, uh, there are a lot of uh, open source applications. You will be amazed to learn that there are a lot of very good open source uh, software is there, you know, but still, Nobody is touching it because simply uh, there are other alternatives are there because we are not uh, afraid of cracking any software. It's very legal to us, but if you go to the real professional world, it's not. It's illegal. So we have to build it. And software engineers like you, you have to make this kind of uh, solution. You can find lots of professional looking MPG broker in the market. They are expensive, but it can be made with this uh, simple open source. Okay. This is one. Uh, in the in the morning session, I have shown you one very interesting software or idea. You see, it's visitor analytics. So it a it a application, but this is like you know, it will show you your age, gender. And uh, dwelling time. Dwelling time means dwelling time means how long you are in front of that camera. Okay. So this actually we are de I mean, demonstrating on our soft expo, and this is the dashboard. I have to show you the dashboard. Time uh, attention time. What is the maximum? Let's say seven point five minutes max. That means we first some just standing on the uh, I mean, poster or in the TV, and this is the dwelling time, attention time, and the age group. You can see lots of, I mean, seventy-one percent are adult. There are some senior. There are no youngsters. Okay, and uh, gender kind of thing, and also the emotions. Most people are in digital stage, so this GUI or this dashboard is is the key to the business, you know. The business doesn't understand, the need to understand what is going on behind. And this emotion analytics, uh, very simply, you can just Google it and you'll find a lot of GitHub kind of thing where OpenCV, do you have heard the name OpenCV? Yes. 
right? Open computer vision. So that stack is also free. You can just learn it because there are a lot of, um, I mean, a uh, lot of resources there. It's very simple. You have to learn. You have to see the uh, statistics. Um, you will see. Find. You will find lots of statistical analysis there. Okay. But we can very few. Uh, I mean, code like some code. So that can be developed. Uh, I mean, this open I mean, this this application is developed by that kind of tool. Also. Okay. And lastly, there is an interesting thing. This is basically, I talked about open C, I mean open pose, multi-person open pose thing is done in Python or C++. What it does, you can see the your, all of your uh, limb you can detect. Okay, so in a real life scenario, the use case is enormous. The one of the use case I showed you in the morning, which was made this one.
Because I prefer the expression someone, some people want to become a teacher, some want to go to How many want to become a teacher? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavan.